In this video, I'm going to show you the exact proven methods to help you maximize your aerobic capacity, including what types of training you should focus on, the specific exercises you should do, how long you should do them for, and how you should schedule your workouts in order for you to achieve the best results possible in the shortest time. If you want to go harder for longer, then chasing an ever higher VO2 max is one thing, but knowing the exact exercises and principles in order to achieve it is something altogether different. I'm no stranger to endurance events, having done 100K ultras and an 8,000 kilometer cycle and a 420 mile kayak, all of which require lots of endurance and specific adaptations. And I wish I knew at the beginning of my training, these training principles and exercises and rules that I'm about to share with you now. So first we need to understand what is VO2 max. Apologies to anyone who is already well versed. Essentially VO2 max is our aerobic capacity, is the maximum amount of oxygen that we can take in, transport and utilize by our tissues and therefore reflects very precisely both our respiratory and cardiovascular system as well as our mitochondrial function and muscular function that amounts to our ability to endure at high, high rates. And for this reason, it's the thing that is perhaps most sought after when it comes to athletic performance and conditioning. Now, it's not the only thing that determines your endurance. We have to also think about lactate thresholds and muscular endurance specifically. However, it is a very good measure of your overall fitness, but it has implications not just for athletic performance. It is also an amazing prognostic factor for your overall health and longevity. Many studies have shown that VO2 max is a strong predictor in all-cause mortality and that by regularly training it, you can improve life expectancy. In a population-based study, it was shown that just a one milliliter per minute increase in VO2 max, which is not hugely significant, resulted in a 9% decrease in all-cause mortality. In another study that looked at over 5,000 middle-aged men, it was shown that the top 5% of those men in terms of their VO2 capacity compared to the lowest 5% that they lived on average five years longer. Imagine that living five years longer by simply addressing your cardiorespiratory fitness by doing the things that I'm about to tell you. So how should you be training? Well, for this, we need to understand training zones. Broadly speaking, there are five different training zones each of which represents a different heart rate related to our maximum heart rate and therefore translates to a different work intensity with zone five being the most intense and zone one being the lowest intensity. For example, zone one would be approximately an exercise that causes your heart rate to be at about 50 to 60% of its maximal heart rate. Compare that to the zone five, where this represents around 90 to 100% of your maximum heart rate. Now you can calculate your maximum heart rate by deducting your age from 220. So for example, if you are a 30 year old, then your maximum heart rate approximately would be 190. Each of these different training zones has different benefits for the body, but I'm going to show you exactly the two zones you should be focusing on in order to maximize your overall fitness as evidenced by numerous different scientific papers. So the first training principle. The method that has been proven again and again to be most superior when compared to many other different training exercises is HIIT training or high intensity interval training. This is the training that has been demonstrated to improve VO2 max the most compared to all the others. This involves alternating between periods of very high intensity exercise and periods of very low intensity recovery or complete rest. This type of exercise pushes your respiratory and cardiovascular systems to their limit, therefore encouraging the adaptive processes to occur that will make you into a more formidable, well-oiled machine. Things like improved capillary density, improved oxygen transport. One of the most pronounced of these changes is an increase in stroke volume. This is the amount of blood that your heart can pump around your body with a single beat. And we see significant improvements in this stroke volume, even with relatively short periods of exercise. As studies have shown, we also see benefits to your arterial and vein health. We see increases in blood volume and increases in the time it takes for you to become exhausted. HIIT also has the benefit of improving anaerobic capacity. This is the body's ability to function without the presence of oxygen. When you're unable to deliver enough oxygen to the respiring tissues, this is when you begin to develop lactate, your muscles tire and fatigue, and you are on a ticking time. However, 
If you can stretch out this anaerobic capacity, it means that you can work at maximum intensity for longer. So as for the duration, these HIIT exercises are relatively brief. You need only do them between three and six minutes, but should be performed at around 85 to 95% of your maximum heart rate, which as I said, you can calculate using the equation 220 minus your age, which takes you into approximately the zone four, five area. These intervals should be intense enough that after between three or six or eight minutes, you are at your limit, you are spent, but not so intense that you cannot sustain it for three minutes. So if you find that you're getting puffy and tuckered out and really cannot go beyond say two minutes, then it would be sensible to just slightly dial back the pace so you can hit your minimum target of three minutes. But as I said, anywhere in that window between three and six or three and eight minutes is preferable. Just before we carry on, I'd love for you to hit that like and subscribe button, ring ding ding that bell, I'm an acute medical specialist, but with a love for performance and longevity medicine. Each week I release content that offers concise and practical information to just help you live a healthy and long life, to beat death in life. And I would love to have you along for the journey. Hitting those buttons will be the easiest thing you do today, but may just benefit you for years to come. Anyway, let's crack on. As for the recovery, the recovery time should effectively mirror the workout time which means a one-to-one -one ratio. This recovery can be at complete rest or what we term active recovery, which is when you maintain some movement but at a much lower intensity to still allow your body to recover. If you are running, for example, then you may then pull that run down to a very slow jog or even walk. As for frequency, now the good news is you do not have to train for long periods to see the benefit. Research has shown that just by performing these HIIT workouts between two and three times a week, we see significant increases in VO2 max. In fact, one study showed that only doing six sessions spread over two weeks saw a VO2 max increase of 6%. Here's where it gets magical. Where they took participants and put them through two sessions a day, three hours apart, and did that every other day for only five days, so effectively three days of working, they saw increases of 7.7%. .7%. So how do you implement this in practice? One of the most popular ways to do this is the four by four method. This has been shown in multiple experiments, multiple studies to be superior to other training methods. And it's very, very simple. You do four minutes of intense exercise, aiming for that zone four, zone five, which is 85 to 95% of your max heart rate. You then have four minutes of recovery, either complete rest, or as I mentioned, that gentle active recovery. You then repeat this four times. Really, really simple way of doing it, maximum benefit. As for exercise specifics, good examples would be hill running or fast paced running on the stationary bike so you can measure your output air climbers and certain body weight exercises things like burpees four on four off four times easy the second training principle is zone two training zone two training is characterized by steady state low intensity exercise that develops aerobic capacity it is crucial for creating the base functions from which the rest is built allowing for greater adaptations at a higher level. Now, zone two is where you stress and cause adaptation of the mitochondria, the organelles in your cells that produce energy, ATP. These are the powerhouses in your body and relate so much not only to physical performance, but also for health and longevity. Zone two training is also the zone in which you help mobilize and burn fat, and improve lactate clearance. During this exercise, you'll also recruit mostly type one muscle fibers. These are the slow twitch fibers related more to endurance exercises. Now, as for intensity, there are a couple of fancy tests that you can use to determine where your zone two is. However, there are a couple of easier, more crude methods. First of which is using the heart rate of which we talked about. Zone two would be approximately 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. So using the equation that we discussed before, if you were a 30 year old with a maximum heart rate of 190, therefore aiming for 60 to 70% of this, you would be aiming for a heart rate between 114 and 123. A far more crude measure of doing this should be that whilst you are performing the exercise, you can talk, you can maintain a conversation, but it's difficult. As for frequency and duration, the key for zone two training is the minimal effective dose. Starting from as little as two 30 minute sessions in the week if you are a beginner, and then upgrading, graduating to perhaps three hours or more even a week if you're an elite athlete. Examples being cycling, swimming, steady state running, 
this zone 2 training will not improve your VO2 max to the same degree as the zone 4 5 training, but it will improve a number of different metabolic functions for which then your zone 5 training will adapt to. As I mentioned, it is also the zone in which you burn the most amount of fat. And if you're someone trying to lose weight, then this is very preferential, not only because it's helping you achieve your goal, but because there is also a strong relationship between weight and VO2 max. So by losing weight, you will in fact improve your VO2 max significantly just by that fact alone. So how does all of this fit together? How can you practically utilize both of these training principles, both of these training zones in the best, most effective way possible? This is where the pyramidal training principle comes into play. As the name suggests, pyramidal training, we can think of as a triangle with distinct layers. At the base of this triangle is our lower zone training that represents the low intensity, steady state exercise. Here is where we're going to be spending most of the time. As we graduate up the pyramid to the higher zones of training, zones four and five, we spend the least amount of time on this high intensity exercise. Building your VO2 max is very much a likened to building this pyramid in which the height in which you can achieve the peak VO2 max is very dependent on the width of the base. And for this reason, we spend the majority of our time in the lower zones and less time in the higher zones. And this is what Peter Attia, the longevity expert, often refers to. The advantage of this is that it is simple and it can be progressed logically with the most amount of time spent at the bottom. And as you graduate, you spend progressively less time as you increase the intensity of the exercise. But let's make it even simpler. Since we are going to be focusing mostly on two training zones, zone two and then zone four slash five, we can actually think of this as an 80-20 principle. That means 80% of the time spent on the low steady state exercise in zone two training and the remaining 20% spent on the HIT training, the high intensity interval training. So we build a solid base spending 80% of our time on the zone two training whilst the remaining 20% is focused on the high intensity interval training to maximize the VO2. And in this way, we are encouraging the body to adapt in many different ways that all amount to an increased cardiorespiratory fitness and overall health. A large review has looked at this pyramidal type of training and compared it to other training regimes and has shown it to be superior. So there you have it, two different training methods, zone two and high intensity interval training that can be combined in this 80-20 principle to make you into a formidable machine that is going to last. Anyway, I hope you got some value from that. There's some simple principles and rules that you can incorporate into your fitness schedule in order that you can maximize the benefits to your health and performance so you can run with the best of them. Please do share with any other fitness enthusiasts or anyone who you think may benefit from this information. And please do like, subscribe and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to find out seven proven healthy habits that have helped change my life, then please watch this next video. Until next time, take care.